This is the new Mercedes A-Class, and it really is all new. So you've got new body panels, you've got new mechanicals, and all new technology. In fact, it takes lots of kit from the S-Class, so it really should be the poshest small car you can buy. But in this video, I'm gonna find out if that's true. Now, if you're wondering why the heck I'm carrying the camera myself, it's because there wasn't a space on this launch for my cameraman. So apologies for whatever this turns out like. Mercedes should also apologize for the old A-Class because to be honest, it wasn't that good. However, it still sold strongly because, well, it was the cheapest way to get into a new Mercedes. Now image really matters and this car has one thing going for it from the get-go, that three-pointed star. That lures in lots of buyers, but the rest of the design is really smart. So it builds on the old car and just improves it. You've got the pin effect grille there at the front. This particular car is the AMG line, so you get some more aggressive front bumper treatment there. As you can see that with these vents down the side. And being the edition one, this has some extra, whoa, look, yellow striping on it. One thing to note on this car, are the headlamps so they're very very narrow and sleek really gives the car quite a mean look and the new a-class gets mercedes new design language so you've got very flat body panels not too many creases and in this matte gray paint it kind of looks like a pebble that has been washed smooth by the sea over hundreds of years it really is a nice look this one's riding on 19 inch alloy wheels so you can see you've got the yellow effect around as well, a bit of yellow trim for this edition model. There you go, the launch edition car, because it's the A250. Now down the side, once again, not too many creases, it keeps it quite flat, but it definitely has a very nice look to it. Round the back, it builds on the old car once again, but just looks more modern, looks sleeker, got bigger tail lights there, a bit more pointy, and it's a very nice looking back end. But I do want to see something because down here, it looks like we've got some proper exhaust pipes. Are they? Are they really? Are they? No, no, they lead to nowhere. Once again, Mercedes is continuing its trend of fake exhaust pipes. I wish they'd stop doing it. Really do. To tell you the truth, this car's predecessor was an even more serious offender of form over function. So has Mercedes upped its game this time round? Now, one of the problems with the old A-Class was its boot opening. So it was very, very narrow. Now let's see if they've improved it. And lo and behold, they definitely have. It's much easier to get stuff into the boot. The size is all right. What you've got is just a little bit less than a Volkswagen Golf. So not the biggest, but it's all right. Though I do like this feature. You have three-way folding seats available. And as you can see, they fold flat. Look at that, brilliant. Now let's check out the actual space on the inside for the rear passengers. Once again, in the old A-Class, it wasn't brilliant. I'm hoping this is gonna be better. So I'll just put the seats back, pop my camera down, so I can talk to you there now. And well, look, this seat is in my driving position. If I sit up dead straight, Headroom's all right, knee room's all right. Comfy place to rest my arm there. It's all pretty good. I've got an armrest here as well. And woo, some cup holders. I am more than happy back here. Yep, absolutely fine. The smallish windows to make it look all sporty does mean that it's not the brightest back here, but it's, it's not too bad at all. I am fine. I'm fine. Better than the old car, for sure. That's because the new A-Class is slightly longer and wider than before, and therefore more roomy inside. But really, what sets this new car apart is its incredible cabin. I have to tell you, I absolutely love the interior design of this car. It moves the game on by some margin compared to that of its rivals. I love these air vents, the way they're like turbines, the step dash, but obviously the best bit is this huge display panel. So it consists of two screens, as standard, you get two seven inch displays. This has the upgraded ones where you can upgrade the size of individual screens, one or the other. This has them both done and it looks marvelous. Absolutely glorious. Let's talk about the one for the driver. So I can control that through this steering wheel mounted controls here, just like you get in the S-Class. In fact, the steering wheel is just like in the S-Class. <laughs> this is Mercedes entry level car. 
it's wonderful. So lots of different menus you can cycle through. You can change the displays around, make it look different, change the dials, control everything you want to pretty much control. All through this, it's dead easy and simple to do. Nice and easy to use. And then there's the central screen. Now you can operate it using the touchpad, which actually vibrates. So it has haptic feedback, so you know you're operating things. Or you can actually use it like a normal touch screen. So swipe through it. Now on this particular car, I have some very nice features. So if I go into the car settings, I can go to seat comfort and you can get massage seats. Now, unlike other massage seats, which have air bladders in them, what this actually does is just move part of the seat about mechanically to just keep the blood flowing around your body. <laughs> you know, you're getting really top end tech in this supposedly low end car. I'm very, very impressed with it. Then there's the voice activation. So you can control things in many cars by pressing a button to activate the voice, but you can actually operate this like a bit like you can operate Alexa, Amazon's Alexa or Google. So all you have to say is, hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Direct me to Split Airport. I am starting route guidance to Split Airport, Spoo, Castel Sesta, Dr. Frange Tubmanner. I don't know what airport is, but it's got the right place. To the highlight of <laughs> it is the airport. Unpaved roads. Hey, Mercedes. Cancel guidance. Route guidance cancelled. You know, that's the way to control this car, really. <laughs> it's all very good. Now, some of the materials, absolutely lovely. These on the dash, the steering wheel, the seats are lovely as well. This gloss black trim, it looks good, but I can already see some scratches on it, and this is a brand new car. Then there's one or two pieces which just feel wrong and cheap. For instance, these switches down here, I mean, they're, look at that. They're like they're off a toy. And these are things you're gonna to touch. That is my only gripe though, in an otherwise brilliant cabin. Now, it doesn't come cheap, so the starting price of this car is over 26,000 pounds. The one I'm in here is well over 30,000 pounds. Now, if you wanna see how much you can save on a new car, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen to go to carwow.com. And you are gonna to want to get as good a deal as possible because of the extensive array of cool options, like the groundbreaking augmented reality satellite navigation system. This uses a camera to display the road ahead and then overlays direction graphics on top of the image so you know exactly where to go and never make a wrong turn. Nor get confused which exit to take at a roundabout. It's absolutely brilliant. Then at night you can amuse yourself with the 64 different ambient lighting options and turn your A-Class into a Cirque du Soleil. And let's not forget about the class leading driver assistance systems, which are better than you get in an Audi A3 or BMW 1 series. Now the great thing about this A-Class is that you get all the autonomous driving tech that you get with the S-Class. So I've got automatic cruise control, give me a safe distance from the car in front. It's also going to auto steer to keep me in lane and it's got lane change assist. So if I put the indicator on, the sensors are now checking that it's safe for me to move into that lane. And look, it moves me across into the lane. I don't have to do anything. Look at that. And if I want, it will move me back again. Once again, the sensors are checking it's all safe to do so, and it's moving me back. Ah, which makes it easier driving longer distances. It also means that you're less likely to actually maneuver into a space where someone is already there. This small car has such big car tech, really impressive. Now I do wonder how long I can just drive along without actually putting my hands on the wheel, so let's see. Not supposed to do this really. It's bad practice, but I'm always interested to see. No, there we go. Look, it's starting to flash up a warning. It probably won't do lane change assist now if I ask for it because I haven't touched the wheel for a long enough time. So it thinks, I'm not sure you're there, mate. I'm going to start freaking out. There's the first audible warning. What's he going to do next? Going to do that again. Still keeping me in lane, though. Nice and central in lane, actually. <laughs> That's not enough to put me off. Might climb into the back, have a nap. It's going to do an emergency stop. So it's slowing the car down. It thinks I've lost the plot. And it, yeah, it's, it's slowing it down now. It put on the hazard lights. So it just slows it in lane, puts on the hazard lights. I think I'll take over now because I don't want to annoy other traffic. Got to be responsible after all. Sensible motoring journalist. You've just got to test these systems out though, haven't you? You know, and that's the only way to do it. And seeing as I'm a sensible motoring journalist, I should assess how the A-Class actually drives. After all, the old one, was a bit of a disappointment in this department. So, how about the new car? 
Well, I'm pleased to report that it's much, much better. So I'm driving in Croatia. Some of the roads here are pretty bad and the car's doing an admirable job of you know, smoothing out some of the bumps. Now I should point out that this being the A250, it has a more sophisticated rear independent suspension system than the lesser cars that have a torsion beam. And that's a bit like this car's rear suspension is champagne, whereas the lesser models is more like Prosecco. Also, you can get all models with adaptive suspension, so you can press a button and put them in comfort mode. Got this car in the comfort mode, and like I say, it rounds off the edge of the bumps. It, it's more than adequate. If I'm being critical, bigger bumps do send a bit of a jolt and you do get a bit of noise coming through the cabin when you hit something like a pothole or a manhole cover. It doesn't seem to pummel the bumps in the road into submission like bigger Mercedes do, but it's still pretty good. Like I said, better <laughs> over bumps than the old car. Okay then, what happens when you reach a twisty road? Well, I'm gonna put the car into sports mode now, so it's gonna add weight to the steering, sharpen the throttle response, and stiffen up that suspension. Does it become a fun car? It seems to grip the road well enough, and the steering puts it where you want it to be. It definitely holds onto the road and goes pretty good. Maybe, 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 it doesn't feel like it fits you like a glove, you know? Something like a... Volkswagen Golf, you just seem more in tune with the car. This is almost like going running in someone else's running shoes. You know, you can go quickly, but you don't want to push it to the max because you can't fully tell what's going on beneath you. As a result, the A250 is just not as much fun to drive as a Golf GTI, even though it's essentially supposed to be a hot hatch. This particular car has a two litre turbocharged petrol engine with 224 horsepower, and it should be good for naught to 60 in just six seconds so let's just see how good that is stop it let's go oh struggling for grip there we go it's pretty quick and that's the 60 and did you notice that the noise doesn't sound great this engine let's see just how fast the car got from naught to 60 then well naught to 100 kilometers Ah, that's not too bad. Other engine choices include a nippy 1.4 litre turbo petrol and an economical 1.5 litre diesel. From launch, all A-classes get a decent 7-speed automatic, but manuals will be available at a later date. And while most versions are front-wheel drive, you can get the A-class with all-wheel drive too. Plus, there's two lesser equipment levels than this range-topping AMG line car. Regardless of your choice though, the new A-Class is fairly peaceful to travel in. That is until the ambience is rudely interrupted by the car's own technology. What would you like to do? I'd like you to just shut up. Just shut up. What do you want to do? I want you to shut up. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, for me, this new Mercedes A-Class feels like a genuine Mercedes rather than just a very average car with a three-pointed star just plonked on the front of it. The thing that stands out is the technology and that interior. You know, anyone who sits inside this car is gonna love it, unless, of course, they're a technophobe, and then they might be a little bit overwhelmed. Hey, guys, how would you like an Amazon gift card worth 50 pounds? Yeah, like that. Well, if you know of anyone who's looking to buy a new car, click on the refer a friend box just over there or on the link below the video to refer them to carwow.com. Now, if they buy a car through us, they can save over three and a half thousand pounds and you'll get the gift card. It's easy.